We are pleased to have Laura Lashinsky. Uh, Laura is from the Spire Group to present us today. Um, she's the VP of Marketing at the Spire Group. She is a marketing ace and an artist with extra special expertise helping companies identify their own unique brand identity. During her over 26 year career, she has nailed the secret to using neuromarketing. I like that one, neuromarketing, that's a good one. Uh, best practices to help small to medium sized business, businesses catapult their market share far beyond initial projection. Serving a wide range of industries and clients and have been involved with owning a couple of different bars and restaurants. Laura applies her collective expertise, customizing solutions for each client challenge. Tirelessly asking the right questions is her niche f to creating opportunities for others. Please join me in welcoming Laura. Thank you. Good luck. You wished me luck. Do I need luck? All right. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I guess I'll just start right into this. We want to talk about escaping the social feed because, as you know, if you're trying to deal with technology, it's very tricky to be seen and heard, and there's a lot of options that are very overwhelming. So let's talk about some of them. So you decide to jump on the technology bandwagon. You say, you know what, I'm going to do this Facebook thing. I'm going to tackle that. You spend all this time. You get your idea ready. You're excited about it. You take get a plan. You get your food. You do a food setup and stylist, right, whether it's your own or you hire somebody. You click post after you finally get it set up. You get excited, right, because you want to check it. You check your post, top of the feed at 9.01. You're happy. I think this is awesome. I did my job. This is so easy. You check your post again at 9.04. It's now buried under three cat videos, a soup recipe, a friend's daughter's gymnastics routine, and laughing twins. Where'd it go, right? It got lost in the feed. So you think, hey, you know what? This social media is either one of two things. Very easy, that's all I gotta do, or I don't even get it. How does this work? And that's the land that a lot of my clients live in because they get stuck. Before we start getting to the tactics of social feed and, and using technology, let's back this up for a second. In order for you to have a successful run in promoting your business and to be heard, you gotta start asking yourself, what's the audience that you have? Is it young or is it old? Is, are they in a hurry? Well, let me back up for a second. How many in this room are restaurant owners or are part of a restaurant? Okay. Thank you. Um, it, you wanna, are they, do they want to make an evening out of it? Are they with kids or without kids? Right? Is food for fuel? Or is it something that they enjoy and flavors are exciting to them? Is it a conduit for business conversation? Or is it a way to connect with family and good friends? Is it a local opportunity or is it a destination location? These parallels hopefully are understood by you, and if not, start asking those questions with either your team leaders within the business, your servers, or bring to the table to the owners what you know to be true. Now you have to ask, what do they want? So now that you've identified who's gonna be there, what do they want? Do they want quick turn, or are they a five course kind of customer? Is it family friendly, or is this adult only? Are you primarily on food or heavy on bar? Is this a repeat opportunity or is this the occasional once a year customer? Do you have healthy menu or do you have beer and wings and comfort food? Sit down, try to write through what this is. As you start grabbing all this information, you're gonna be able to funnel it down into an actionable plan. What do your customers know your brand promised to be? So a lot of people ask me, you know, what's a brand? We throw that word around a lot. It's in the last 10 years, it's become very, very hot. A brand is simply a promise. It's a promise made and kept. So if you tell your customers, this is who I am, and you say, we give great service, right, where you come with us, service with a smile, and people don't smile and give you great service, you just broke your brand promise. And you've got a lot of work to try to fix that. Decide, what are you? Are you friendly and community-based? Are you expensive? Are you affordable? Discounted? Exclusive, for those of you that came to talk yesterday, if, you, if you're a high-end exclusive restaurant, if you're discounting, you can hurt your brand. We know that to be true, right? People will doubt, they'll start to wonder what's going on, I wonder why they're discounting. They must not be good, maybe management's turned over. Do you consistently give great service or are you a wild card? And depending on what server you get that day. When you go through those three steps of who and what and how and then you can start to see if you can promote and advertise the right way, right? 
Again, after you figured out who you have, who you want, and who you are, only then can you engage and reach the right audience. Otherwise, all you're doing is just posting to post. And then it turns into a game of squirrel, right? You just start and all of a sudden it's like, oh, Facebook squirrel? Okay, I'll go do that. Oh, uh, Facebook, or it's, it, it's, my kids are on Snapchat and Instagram. I better do that. What, squirrel? It doesn't work. There's no plan because you don't know who you're trying to reach. These are numbers from 2016. The numbers are staggering. Just take a look, right? Facebook alone, 1.6 billion users. It's a lot of users. YouTube, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Instagram. That's a lot of noise. It's a lot of noise for people to understand, you know, where do I go? What do I do? When people ask me that, I go back to this. Because this is super important, which, you know, is a lot more than very important or just regular important. Build your brand around what your customers are interested in. Reflect those interests on social media platforms and promotional material. Otherwise, they won't be listening. Here's my example. If you're a restaurant that's heavy on comfort food, mac and cheese, beers and wings, they don't want to see posts about people walking their dogs in, in a kayak, right? That doesn't make sense. That's not who they identify with. And the converse is true. If you're a farm-to-table kind of operation, if you're dealing about you know, greens and, and growing and agriculture, don't show maybe um, you know, greasy food fests or wings, uh, wings you know, all you can eat wings. It's, it's, it's confusing. They don't understand. They're not going to connect with you. There's, um, you're going to hear, if you haven't heard already, but content-generated marketing. How many of you have heard of that term? Raise your hands. OK. Um, the whole idea on the internet right now in order to be seen and heard is relevance. So Google, we'll use Google, rewards businesses based on their algorithm on relevant content. And what that means is Google wants people to be on Google telling their users the things they want to know. So if you are creating ideas that generate interest, Google says, oh, people like going to them. I'm going to keep moving them up in their ranking. So this term of SEO, search engine optimization. So when you do have content that's shareable, right? So I send it to you, you send it to her, you send it to him. Google goes, well, this must be interesting because people are sharing it. So here are some tips on making content shareable. The significance comes in is that it's authentic and real. Think about if you are on social media right now, how many um, real things that you share. It's usually something that either was unexpected, something that hit a, a visceral you know, emotion, laughter, you know, grandma falling down the steps seems to be passed along, you know, two million, you know, it wasn't planned, it wasn't staked. So, you know, disruptive ideas, right? Ideas or concepts that challenge our way of thinking. Social proof, we'll get into that later. The idea that if many people are doing something, it must be better or true or real, so I'm, you're gonna follow that. Get a story. You know, people can relate to story. There's a term called story selling. It's actually real in marketing. If I tell you a story, you're gonna relate to it much more than if I just tell you what to do. An example that I gave yesterday was my daughter um, needed some medicine and the medicine is, is $420 a month. And after I um, shopped around and around or whatever, I got it for $110 a month, right? Well, now that $110 seems free. So that little parable, I could have said to you, listen, have a high price and then come in with a low price and then it'll make the high price seem, or low price seem better. It doesn't connect as well. So when you tell a story, people can relate. They can, they can tell it back. Creative anticipation. Try to build some excitement around something. Value exchange. Give them something they want. They want information. They want something to share. They want to know something about your restaurant. They want to know, is something done a different way? Is something hand-rolled? Did you get your potatoes from somewhere it's different? Um, do you use a different kind of oil? Anything that helps tell that story about your brand. Something that's fresh and interesting and something that's simple and advocacy. You know, if there are uh, organizations or charities that you're aligned with or feel passionate about, share that. Especially with the millennials, they want to know that you're they're connect, they're, They want to know that they're a part of something big as well. I'm going to do an overline of some online tools, and I will do offline tools as well. Facebook. How many of you are using Facebook right now to promote your business? Okay. How many of you feel like you have a handle on how to use it as a strategy tool? Okay. 
Facebook is, if you're gonna pick any platform of all of them, you're gonna wanna do Google Plus and you wanna do Facebook. Google Plus is done a little bit differently and we'll get to that. But for a Facebook business page, you have the opportunity to share discounts, you have the opportunity to give coupons, you know, use it for photos and new dishes. Use it to promote your staff. Did any staff member have an accolade? Did you reach a milestone one year, two year, five year? Um, give them something to celebrate. On the right hand side, you're gonna see some statistics. Pretty fascinating. I will have those in a, a slide that I will put on the back end of the website for Spire Group and you can re uh, reference those. If you're using Facebook, of course they have, Facebook is free, but they have a paid service where you boost your post. Get familiar with that, go on YouTube, learn some videos about it. You can target your audience very narrowly. You can pick a, an area, you can pick an age, you can hone in and use it very strate strategically. You can do a one mile radius, you can do a zip codes, you can, you, there are ways to craft this so these messages are very pointed and then you can test it and see if it's working. Because again, if you don't know who your audience is, find out who your audience is. This is one way to test it. LinkedIn, how many are using LinkedIn in this room? How many of you uh, have the opportunity to do large group catering? Okay, LinkedIn is a great format for that. <clears throat> LinkedIn, it talks to business people. So Facebook is like inviting people into your living room. LinkedIn is like inviting people into your office. So the conversations on Facebook should stay pretty professional. So if you're trying to create a large group opportunity, if you're trying to run some extra revenue at lunchtime before or after, and you've got delivery service or great pickup service, they, um, those caterers wanna know about it. Get on their groups, get on their feed, start posting that you're there. It's your way of kind of raising your hand to say, hi, I'm in the room, we're an option. Twitter. Twitter um, kind of came and then it kind of dipped down a little bit and now it's kind of resurging a little bit and I think it's because um, you have 140 characters and you can say something really pointedly and you get to people real time. So if people have their Twitter feed available, you can, so you can say things like patios open, happy hour specials, come visit us. Um, let's say you're running um, long on staff and you wanna bring people in, maybe do a temporary, you know, from seven to eight tonight, we'll have this special. So you can engage with them real time and because it's short, they're more apt to look at it as opposed to reading a long post. Instagram, Instagram's a platform that's basically visual. You wanna show things like happy customers. You want to show things like your fun dishes or ways to prepare. Um, Instagram is like, uh, it's for the non-readers, I always call it, it's for lazy readers, right? You just get to look at it quickly. Throw up a virtual contest on there. Show people, this is the great upper, this is a great menu and platform for you to show the lifestyle that we were referenced earlier about the kayaking. Show them, um, if you again are farm to table, show them kayaking or canoeing and farming or show other lifestyle things that your fan base will get to enjoy. So it's, it's less, so if you can at the end of the day, remember what is in it for them so it's not about you showing your pasta dish, it's about how does that pasta dish make their life better today, right? How does that pasta, have, how does eating out make their day better? Well, they don't have to cook, they don't have to clean, they get conversation with their kids, you know, they're not yelling about who has to clean, the, to put the dishes away from the dishwasher. So all of those languages, all of those conversations are about what's in it for them. Pinterest, oh yes. Um, if you use the content I interview, yep. Okay, so the question is, there's Hootsuite and Buffer are two services that if you, you tell it where, so if you do a Facebook post, you can also tell it to share it on all the other platforms that you have. So with one click, you can do one post, it can go to Instagram, it can go to Pinterest, it can go to Snapchat, okay. So one of the parts of that question is, is can you gauge how many people are being, are using all of them, is that correct? I don't have that answer. Usually, because it's a two-way 
participation. So if you put out a Facebook page, somebody has to find you and like you. They have to be a friend, right? If you're in Snapchat, you have to be in that group. Pinterest, you know, you have to be a part of, you have to be accepted and followed. So I think the answer kind of lies in with the framework of how many followers you have. And as far as repetition goes, people will get annoyed if they're over noised, if that makes a sense. They'll turn off their notifications, they have that choice. But then the trick is, we talked about yesterday, is to build the content. So if you're worried about bugging them, giving them give them things they wanna hear and read, right? So if you just keep saying, um, Taco Tuesday, you know, whatever, and you keep saying Taco Tuesday, they're gonna go, oh, it's Taco Tuesday, right? Give them something else. Do something different. Give them something to be excited about. So it lives in the content more than the, the volume, but people will be turned off. But again, they're not gonna be turned off if you're giving them something that they want. Did that answer your question enough? Yeah, I, we would like to do some strategy for each platform, but frankly, we're out of time. Yeah. But what happens is all four platforms start get, get the same goal. Right. I would ask them. So he said he wonders how many customers follow them on all four posts, and I'm a huge believer in asking your customers. At any given time, ask your customers anything. They want to be a part of it anyway. So we'll get into neuromarketing in a little bit, but that's called, it's a social trigger. So what that means is, is that if you ask someone for help and they give it back, that reciprocity just made them more loyal to you. Use that to your advantage, ask them. Don't take anything for granted as far as your customer base. I cannot tell you how many times, I just went through this last night, actually after the show I met with a client. Um, part of the exercise that I go through with all my clients is, is we try to find this, like a SWOT analysis, right? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So I will meet with a client and they will say, this is who I am and these who are all my people are and this is what my customers want. And I go, excellent, now can I go talk to your customers? And they say, sure, here's a list of all your customers. I go, great, and I find the customers that they keep, the wins, and the ones they've lost, the loses. And I cannot tell you if I've done it a thousand times, 950 of them are not the same as what, after the whole analysis goes through, they're not the same as what the company thought they were. So if you all think you know who your customers are, make sure you know who your customers are. Because I'm telling you, I can't, over and over again, people will say, this is who we are, and then we challenge it, and we're like, well, we're kind of that, but this. Or, oh, you know what, I didn't know my customers really wanted to hear this, or see this, or be this. So be very mindful of what you think you know. Just challenge it, just challenge it. Pinterest is another format, um, very visual. But the opportunity with that is, it's different than a, a, an Instagram or Snapchat. When you click on the image, it'll take you to the original base, the source base. So for example, if you have a recipe idea, because that's something they would be interested in, rather than just a picture of your product, when they click on it and save it to pin, it will take them back to your restaurant. So it's an awesome trail to get you back to the original source. Okay, these three, right? Yelp, TripAdvisor, and Google Reviews. If you are not set up on Yelp, people can still give the reviews no matter what. So if you're not set up on Yelp, people can blast you with good or bad reviews and you have no control over it. At the very least, when you leave here today, <laughs> go set up that Yelp account, put in all the information that you need like photos, store hours, location, menu, price range, if you've got Wi-Fi, outdoor seating, parking, right? Respond to the feedback immediately, good or bad. So if they say, I had a great dinner, we say, thank you so much for coming, we were so glad to have you. If, you, if you're the owner, um, I I'm, I'm proud of my staff, we've got a great staff. Well, you just told them something, you told the universe something, well now, you guess what, people, perception is reality, they believe it to be true. So now they're going to go in and they're gonna expect great service. If someone had a negative review, if responding to a negative review publicly, thank the reviewer for the feedback, apologize for the incident, and promise to improve it in the future. You may even wanna go so far as to contact that reviewer and maybe give them a gift certificate or an opportunity to come back in for a do-over. Do not think it will go away, it will stay there. And when people are more forgiving when they see that you've owned it, right, right took, advantage, took owned it, and then responded. Google Plus. This mammoth of Google that we have, Google Plus is the page, here's an example. My friends over at Mamma Mia's let me put this out. 
So the, the right, the left side of that graphic is the organic search, right? So Mamma Mia's restaurant or pizza restaurant in Mequon. The right side column that you see, that's the Google Plus page. It's free, you control that. Google rewards people that use their services. You bump up in the algorithm, right? You play the algorithm, you move up in the search ranking. Please get your Google Plus pages done. Put that information in there. People are so lazy in general that when they scan, it's the first, they don't even have to go to your website. It's got a link to your website and it'll get a link to your menu. But be up there, otherwise it's just gonna be a blank page or the other people who have it are gonna jump above you. Let's talk about some technologies on how to reach the new and old customers. Geo-targeted apps. There's an app called Proximal. It's, a, it's, it's out of West Bend. They're local. They're new. They're a startup. They've been around for about a year. I've been encouraging people to use them, and here's why. You pay a monthly service. You use their phones. The, the, the numbers for cell phones are stagnant. It's like five and a half billion people have smartphones. It went to 77% in 2016. They project in a couple years there's going to be one smartphone per person on the planet. And this is like within three years they're projecting. Use that technology to your advantage. People are, are my high schooler doesn't even have a pocket. She just walks around. They're gonna have like carpal tunnel. It will be a whole different thing. It's just like stuck on her all the time. These geo-targeted push notifications, what that means is, is if I've got my phone and I'm driving through an area, ping, Mamma Mia's has breadsticks for whatever. It's a sunny day in February, ping. Oh, the, the patio is open today because it's such a beautiful day. You're, you're getting them a reason to come in. You're giving them a reason to come in. Give them a reason to come in. They're trying to figure out what to do anyway. Where should we go to dinner tonight? I'm really sure. Give them a reason. There's a band playing tonight. Let them know about it. You don't always have to give anything away. Just let them know. Keep the conversations going. Oh, also, so when we owned our bars and restaurants, you know, if you'd be overstaffed, you're sitting there with, you don't want, you know, who do you let go? Tell people from 8 to 9 you're going to run a quick special. It's instant. You can turn it right off. And then there's back-end analytics that show you what worked and what didn't work. Google Maps, please check your information. Oh, yes. Uh, the last slide, do you foresee a point when consumers will either have those kind of notifications? Yeah, they can turn them off. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is, do you see a point when consumers will be? Like, is it just something where they say, like, when the old stuff, they live, and it's why you can turn this off? For me, personally, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So the question is, is, do you think people will be turned off by eventually having all these push notifications come to them? So the answer is probably yes and no, depends on who you are. I would say that people can turn off the notifications. So every app, for, even from Pinterest to um, Facebook, you can turn off your notifications per platform. I think if you're providing value, they'll turn it on. So a friend of mine is a big crafter, so she keeps her Michaels Pin, push notifications on all the time because she wants to know if there's a special or something going on. You know, I mean, I think it depends on if you're going to frequent it. You know, if you don't have a dog and you're getting pet store notifications, that's going to irritate you. Yeah. I think there's a lot of noise. I think what I'm hearing is, I mean, there's just a ton of noise, right? So how do you give them relevant? Right, because if you're, you're making a competing decision to get involved in something like this, yeah. for years, you're going to have to make a bad, no one cares yeah, so the question is, is there a danger to get into this because you, if you invest in it, I would say that everything is moving so fast and so fluid that you almost can't not get invested in some of these things. You know, because you can try them and you can, things like this are a monthly per subscription. You know, uh, you know if, it's, if it's $70 a month, you can't even buy an ad for $70 a month. But as a restaurant owner, you get to throw the ad a lot. Those kinds of things, yeah. I agree. I think you have to kind of. I think you got to test your audience. You know, pick a group of loyal customers. Ask them. Say, would you test this? You know, would, could we put you on a test? Get, get a focus group going with, and and then you start to understand the conversations, and they might come up with something that. Um, you don't even know. I had a gentleman yesterday tell me, we were talking about loyalty programs, and he said what he did is he was a part of a restaurant truck stop, and he said that they had a punch card, so after 10 punches of coffee, you would get a free coffee, and he said they were, you know, he scrapped that whole idea, and he said after 10 punches of coffee, your card went into a bowl, where if he pulled your name, you got coffee free for a month. 
He said he reduced his costs on giveaway and increased his exposure and excitement, he said, by 400%. So, I mean, play with someone, you know, who would have thought, you'd think, oh, why would someone forfeit a free coffee? Well, they did, because they wanted a bigger prize. Do you have any experience with, uh, so it's a new service available to us in our area right now, uh, anybody, geofencing. So, I'm a craft beer bar, and I can buy digital ads to my normal vendors, and I can say, I only want people who are sitting in my competitors Right, so the question was, talked about geofencing. Are you familiar with that at all? Share your hand. Okay, so you, it's a way of um, strategically targeting groups and demographics. And so in this gentleman's case, he said there's a, a bar, he can take his, he can t reach his customer base basically in competitor spaces. And the question is, is you know, will people use it, will they engage? First I would say, they must have data. So geofencing to me runs along the same as this kind of stuff. Um, this is different because it's, it's um, community-based, meaning it's an area. Um, you have to look at your budget. <laughs> so all of these things sound great, right? But what's going to give you maximum for your dollar? I mean, if, I, if you said to me, I would rather see you boost than do geofencing. If you're trying to get to your audience, um, how far away are they? Well, Okay. Uh, and I would, I would, I would do those things a lot, so I would have to go back to the service is not going to be able to go to the store. It's kind of down the price. Okay. So we're talking about, uh, the reason why I'm asking some of these questions is because um, there's a loyalty component. So if people are really loyal to their restaurant and you ping on their phone, they might not like you so much. So from a mental trigger standpoint, it's interesting. If the deal is good enough, they won't care about loyalty. So it goes back to that content again. So if you're pulling up an ad and it's intriguing or you offer something different that somebody else doesn't have, they'll listen. Just like you would, right? Because you're, you're basically the customer. So treat them, treat, you know, look at your insights and apply it to that. Would you, you said you don't want your phone pinging all the time. Then you won't want to, you're probably not someone who's going to post a lot and often, right? That would make sense. Yeah. So. You can use your own personal taste, but also know that other people, I mean, I'm still flabbergasted that people on Facebook post a picture of their lunch and say lunch, and then 10 people post back and go, yum, mmm. I'm like, who has time for that? But they do. Google Maps, if, please check your information. Make sure that it's all verified, the hours are correct, and everything is Set up, right? 89% of consumers go to a restaurant online and check it out before they even come in or think about coming in. If your information is upside down, that's not helping anybody. Google Alerts, it's a free service. Sign up for it so that if anybody posts or talks about you, your staff, your business, or whatever, you, are know, you find out about it, it lets you know, and then you can repurpose that. So if it was a great review, if it was someone in, you know, an employee of yours, you know, saved a child from a moving vehicle and there was an article about it, you know, use it, share it. Use your homepage, please use your homepage. The trick that I find with restaurant owners is because you're so busy in the trenches of doing your thing that the website just gets up and it's done and that's it. Use that homepage, it's a billboard for you as opportunity to promote anything, timely, event, a band, uh, ask for feed, uh, photos from customers. Um, please put your online menu as visible as possible on that homepage. Do not make them dig for it. They want to know what you serve. They're trying to qualify themselves. They're, they're walking in going, do I want to go here? Give them a reason to come. Let them know. Blogging, remember we talked about that, that orange slide that talked about content? If you don't want to blog and write about yourself, go find somebody who will. 
There's somebody always who wants to talk about something. Maybe they could be the spokesperson for you. The whole idea of blogging and the strategy behind it is you're getting that content out in the universe so your search engine raises and people can find you. Again, Google rewards you if you have relevant content. People, if people find you to have relevant content, they'll reward you. Food bloggers out there, they love it. Give them something to write about. Ask them. You want to give a restaurant a try? You want to write a review? Let them know you're there. Loyalty programs. I would think that you all are probably inundated with loyalty program options. Whittle it down, knowing who your audience is, what they want, and what they want to hear. Right? Birthdays are a huge opportunity to bring in large groups. Rarely will someone come to a birthday celebration alone. They'll bring a friend, they'll bring grandma and grandpa, they'll bring their best friends. It's a way to bring a group. Have some fun with some of your specials. If, if February is always, you know, like kind of known as a red-hearted month, give redheads a discount. Green-eyed people in March. I don't know. Figure out something that is a little more clever than the average person. Anything that has some sort of fun factor, different, unusual, unique, do that. Join a club masterminds group. This is an opportunity, this is a proven process that was done in the 40s. So this uh, Napoleon Hill basically went around with all the really rich, famous people and said, why are you so rich and so successful? Why are you so famous? And they said, because we have a group of people that we ask and we vet our questions and solutions and problems to. Here's an option for you. It's like-minded people that get together in non-competing spaces. So you can talk with restaurant owners from Ohio and California and say, listen, I'm really stuck. I need a fresh idea, right? They're going to help you out. There's an accountability that's built in. Really, really successful. Try to do a newsletter. Get that list going, right? Generate some content that, um, something they want to know. It's, this is where the story opportunities come in. Because then people can go back to their, their friends and family and say, oh, did you hear about so-and-so? Yeah, they did this you know, walk for cystic fibrosis, and they raised X amount of money, and it was so cool, and they shut the patio down, and blah, 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 right? They decorate. That's, these are opportunities to say thank you. These are opportunities to say please come. Actually, this would be a reward because they'd already be on your list. This is more of a thank you to loyal customers. Partner with delivery services. McDonald's just released, I think it was about a month ago, that they're going to offer delivery services. Clearly, they know something that, and are engaged in something that we aren't as, uh, have the pulse on. So if they're going to invest in this, it's because they know that people are now too lazy to even get takeout and drive through. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> so places like Grubhub, can you have delivery services? Right, they're local. Online reservation tools. I um, actually had a call with No Wait last week. I wanted to hear a little bit more about them, and I walked through their... Um, whole demo, you know, that's an opportunity where if people really don't want to wait in their busy families or if they don't want to sit in a lobby, they're built into your hostess situation and you're, you're, I don't, you can integrate inside of your POS. And so people from the convenience of home can click and get their reservation in and everybody's saying the same thing and they walk in, they have a great experience. Hopefully they'll come to your bar beforehand. Here's where your social media monitoring, this buffer and Hootsuite that I was talking about helps you generate and populate easily and quickly. Ask your people to promote the content, right? Ha host a photo contest. Ask your customers to share their favorite meal at your establishment. Share entrees on a dedicated content page, right? Be able to push it out to Facebook, so anywhere, even um, uh, LinkedIn, you can use it as an opportunity to say, you know what, you're going to have a really good meeting today and close that really big deal. Why? Because you're, you had a, your people had a great meal, they're satisfied, and they're feeling rejuvenated. So you can equate a, a, a handshake deal because you gave them good food. Why? Because you told them so, right? And they believe it. Award with free appetizers or other prizes. Give people, people love free stuff, right? Free shirts, free. It's not free to you because it costs something, but then you look at your lifetime acquisition if it costs you $4 for a t-shirt to make a customer come back for the next couple years and they generate, you know, three, oh, I here. They, they generate $3,000 for you in, in a couple years. That, that $4 shirt sure seemed free, didn't it? Offline opportunities, strategic alliances. I'm amazed at how many restaurants and bars don't do this. Look around you. I don't care if you take a, you know, one mile as a crow fly or two blocks as the crow flies. 
Who can you partner with strategically to give and get? Is there a haircut place down the street? Can you say, listen, can we put a coupon there, or a discount there if your people come? Um, is there an attorney? Is there a doctor's office? Is, think about who's around you and ask to say, listen, if you let us do this, we'll do this for you. Use those strategic alliances. Complement each other's services. Word of mouth, super important, right? But you gotta ask them and you gotta create the opportunities. Target some groups. If you have Girl Scouts, tell your troop leader you'll do a, you know, make a dinner, make a dessert, decorate cupcakes. PTO, parent-teacher organizations, they're always looking for something and somewhere to go because they don't have money. So if you say, listen, we'll host it, you can bring your own stuff in. Great opportunity for publicity and advertising. Those schools and those moms, they're crazy. They're, they'll promote anything. They become huge influ influencers for you. I was one of them. So I, I mean, they were aggressive in sharing and telling and forcing people and bullying people to go to your restaurant because they gave you pizza for, you know, teacher's appreciation night. They're loyal. They're great. Do a special invite to your regulars. Give them something to talk about. Then we go back to old school print. It's expensive, but sometimes necessary. The only thing with print is, you know, after all those years, but if I met with you and you're my restaurant, we'd say, okay, what do we want to do? We strategize on the ad, we put together the ad, so now you got a couple weeks. Then you send it to print. You know, back in the day, you actually had to have it go to a, get it uh, printer prepped. Then it goes to the publication. Well, they're three months or a week or two weeks or whatever it is out. By the time you reach your customer, that news is already old news. So the drawback to having print is that you can't respond to anything, right? If something, the snowstorm yesterday, you could have said, uh, you know, listen, we're open, we'll deliver. You guys stay in the comforts of your home, you snowed in, no worries, our, our delivery people are out. If you, for print, you can't even do that. You can't anticipate there's gonna be a snowstorm yesterday. So that's the disadvantage to print, but it's still viable and you can still do postcards. Please do postcards over envelope mailings. They have a postcard, they have to look at one side to throw it before they throw it away, right? No matter what, cheaper postage. Use places like Vistaprint, if you don't have a local printer, they have 50% off sales all the time. Canva is a free um, internet site that, where you can design your ads. Now you don't have to pay a designer as well. Lots of great templates, lots of great opportunities for you there. Signage, right? Promote. Use the bathrooms in a tasteful way. What kind of menu boards can you do? Have exit signage. When you go through an experience and you're greeted at the door by your host or hostess, you're sat, you know, you're dealing with your uh, server, maybe even the owner comes over and greets you, they're full, they might even be feeling uncomfortable because they're full, and they leave your establishment, give them one last thought. Control the one last thought. Put it as they're leaving, something, whatever that is, whatever reflects the culture of your business. If, it's, uh, if you're a, a business that has a lot of personality, put something fun, right? Not like don't let the door hit in the ass or anything like that, but you know, something fun. Like, do something, Let it, give them a lasting impression so now they're walking to their car and they just feel good about paying money because after the, cause the pain point in them just paying that bill just reminded them that they just paid for that bill. Give them something on the upswing. Join your local chamber of commerce, huge networking opportunity. Everybody there is hungry to network. Take advantage of that. Church bulletins, another great opportunity for affordable advertising and marketing. Your local rec department, I don't know how many, people, how many people in the room use the local rec department books for advertising. Yeah, huge lost opportunity. Communities put out a rec department book and it serves young, middle, and old. Less about high school age, but it serves uh, the elderly groups. We'll have a whole section in there. This particular one they have up on there, I live in Mequon. I think the ad is $50 or something. Targeted, targeted audience. You can say whatever you want to say. It's perfect opportunity for something like that. So when people are in your place, right, how do you get out of that noise of all this stuff? Well, do some fishbowl giveaways. People love the opportunity and they think they're gonna win, they're hopeful. Do your loyalty programs, right? Give them something that re rewards a repeat customer. Free samples, this is a big one. Costco talked about their, what did they want? Um, they went up thousands of a percent on their merchandise. It's not because it tasted good, it's because people felt the reciprocity in getting something. Neuromarketing mental trigger. I give you something, you're gonna to wanna to give me something back. It's a no risk opportunity for them. 
Think about how many times you go in a restaurant and you read a description and you go, oh, I don't know, though. Might be too salty or I don't know, maybe it's too spicy for me, right? Give them a sample. If you have a loyal customer, if somebody's already, if you're already at the kitchen running and they're doing something, grab a little cup and just say, you know, hey, listen, I don't know if you, did you try this soup yet ever? Next time you're in, maybe you'll want to hear. They can taste it and they can not like it and not be embarrassed about it, or they can love it and now they're going to order it next time. They're happy. It didn't cost you really anything. Ongoing promotions, right? Train and pattern habits. You want them to come back. Use familiarity, right? People like to feel comfortable. They don't want to walk into a room. Do you ever, they talk about when you walk into a party and you walk, if you walk into a party and you're not greeted by the host, do you ever watch people? They kind of have this hiccup, this pause of like, am I supposed to be here right now, right? Until they see a familiar face. Okay, use that to your advantage. Give them some familiarity, generate some excitement. Please upgrade your menu design if it's not. There's a lot of free tools out there. Make it look updated and not sticky if they're plastic. Comment cards, ask them for feedback. They want to tell you. They want to tell you, but no one's asking. And they will not tell you to your face. They'll tell you anonymously, though, because it's safe. People avoid, by general human nature, people avoid confrontation. Give them an opportunity to fill out a comment card. Find out what you're doing right, find out what you're doing wrong. You get that information, guess what? You just get to use it on everything that you have. Someone goes, you know what? I've been coming here for 15 years. This is my number one place. It's anonymous. You can still use that testimonial for your website, for your social media posts. It's great content to repurpose. Give them great service. I'm telling you what, train your staff to give a smile. So all this stuff about noise and which platform and whatever, give them a smile. There are studies that show there is a real smile and there's a social smile. People know that they would pay twice as much for the same beverage if they saw a happy face instead of an angry one. Now angry, I guess you understand is the antithesis of that, but people know there's two muscles in your face that respond when it's a genuine smile. Get your staff to smile. I don't care if you tell them, listen, put on a fake smile. Every fake smile will eventually turn into a real smile, right? But get it going so they feel it feels genuine and authentic. According to neuromarketing specialist Roger Dooley, right? be sure your interview process includes an evaluation of the emotions they project. A candidate who doesn't display genuine positive emotions during the interview likely won't in a customer situation either. So if you're sitting there and you're asking them who, what, where, when, why, Try to get some sort of emotion out of them and try to figure out a question or scenario and see how they respond. I can't tell you how many times I listen to bar and restaurant owners and they say to me, oh, I can't keep good staff. It's so hard to find good staff. Well, hire right first and then retain them second. I'm going to give you a couple messaging tips. Sorry for repeat for anybody who was here yesterday. This neuromarketing word that you've heard me say a couple times, um, what that is, is in the last 10 years, they, they do studies where they hook up a brain with fMRI cables, basically. And the whole brain is just wired all the way around. And they've gone to c consumers and they show ads, taste food, whatever. And they, they show you how people respond. And they know for a fact, well, it used to be it was kind of questionable, you would test things. Well, this is the science behind marketing. Pleasure versus pain. People prefer pleasure. They'll seek pleasure before they avoid pain. So knowing that, people prefer to get 50% more of the same product for the same price than 33% off. So for example, if it's, I, for whatever reason, it seems to resonate with hand lotion. If you have hand lotion and you get 50% more, or you take the original hand lotion and discount it 33%, people will buy the 50% more, even though it's the same price for the product. right? because they're seeking pain, pain, pleasure instead of pain. They also like it when you double discount. So if you have something and you say it's 25% discount and you take another 20, or if you just say it's 40% off, math is exactly the same. They will say it's a better value with the 25-20, the double discount. Double discount whenever you can. If you say in your advertising and marketing and promotions, get money off over save money, your success will be in the get money off. Because again, neuromarketing, we, we are hardwired for pleasure as opposed to avoiding pain. So if you get money, pleasure, if you save money, you're avoiding pain. Drop the dollar sign. 
They know for a fact in, with the neuromarketing studies that when a dollar sign is seen, it triggers a part of the brain that absolutely connects with pain. So on your menu, if you can, so they did a study, they did a study, they took a restaurant, it had dollar sign 12.00, okay, dollar sign 12.00. The next one had the word 12 spelled out, and the bottom one had just 12, no dollar sign, no cents. The bottom one had 66% more conversion rate in buys with that it does not trigger any, when you start getting into sense that it confuses people and it starts adding, it's a pain factor. Try to adopt the dollar sign as much as you can. But the converse is true. If you're saving the money, right, then that dollar sign should be in their face and slap them over the head with it. So you have lots of choices, right? But at the end of the day, it goes back to what I talked about. If you gotta have a plan, a strategy, you gotta have intention and purpose. Your goal is to stand out of the noise. Give them something relevant. Give them something to chew on. Use the tools effectively. If you get overwhelmed, just stay with one. Just stay with one and try to master one. And use YouTube and all these tutorials as your option. Do or search and just say, ways to uh, promote my restaurant with Facebook. There is, people post everything. Success stories, nightmare stories. They'll be on there. Find your customers and give them something fresh. Something simple, creative, and relevant. And then you'll be able to move out of that noise and go to the top without breaking the bank, right? Any questions? Yeah. I'm wondering if you have any suggestions on how to use Snapchat as a marketing tool, but it seems like a high school and college kids prefer Snapchat to just about anything. But unlike Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, where you can do things like geo targeting. I don't really know how I can use it to get this. I post pictures on it, right? right. I don't know where they go and see them. I know. So the question is, how do you use Snapchat effectively, basically? Um, the tricky part is Snapchat hasn't evolved to figuring out how we need to do that. <laughs> so unless you're in the circle, right, and you're a part of that day's posts, you get lost in the same feed. So I think what you have to do is you have to back it up and try to get to that group, whatever that group is, and start talking inside that group and give them relative, relevant content, and then ask them. Yeah, so you have to be, that's the trick. So it's, that's why Snapchat is not one that I put on here, and it's because it hasn't evolved yet, right? So Facebook started out as just a simple social platform, and they said, ooh, businesses can use this, and we can charge them money. Snapchat isn't there yet. So we try to tell people just stay away from that a little bit. The trick with Snapchat is to find influencers so if you've got it, I use the example of, um, I had a client of mine who was selling a particular shoe. I said, get in that high school, find the most popular kid in school. Sorry, I mean, that's what I said, but it sounds so mean when you say it out loud. But find the most popular kid, put those shoes on that kid. Have them walk around the school. Best way to sell anything, right? You get them influencers, whatever the, whoever they are. Um, the internet, online, YouTube. These kids, I don't know if you have children and you ask and follow what they're following, they're following influencers. Businesses are so dialed into these influencers, they have, um, there's one, my one son likes to snowboard. This one kid has on, I think like 14 logos on every, he just goes out to snowboard and conveniently he has 14 logos between his hat, his goggles or whatever, all around because they know that he's watched on YouTube all the time. So they're like, well, check, this is a walking brand advertisement. That's what they do, it's smart. And that triggers that neuromarketing, it triggers a, a, a thing called familiarity and social proof, oh, social proof. So the example of social proof that I was gonna talk about, if you go to a new, um, if you go to a um, new town, you've never been there before and you're hungry, you drive down the street and you see one restaurant has 25 cars and the other restaurant has four cars, which one are you gonna go to? One with 25 cars, why? Because all those people there, they must know something the other ones don't. So you just automatically believe them because it's just based on volume. It's called social proof. It's a mental trigger. Your subconscious does it without us even knowing what's going on. If you're slow, have your employees park in front. Make sure they move then when you know, it starts getting busy. But it's a really great way to play that game. Or if you've got a competitor that's running a real big special, put those, let your staff park in front again. Make it look like there's something going on. People want to be where something else is. is. So now you're all geniuses at this social media stuff, right? Super overwhelming, and it's, um, take advantage of the fact that it's real time. I think that's what I would say, like, if I had to summarize any of this, respond to things like a snowstorm, a sunny day, 
you know, you're so busy about getting the, your food in and prepped and staff busy. Just take a second, back up. What, what can you talk about today that will get in front of them? Also, yesterday I had a gentleman tell me, he said he posts all these ads for his restaurant, all of them. He said last week he posted just a silly one of his staff. He said he got five times more views and shares and likes than ever before on anything with strategy that he's ever done. And I, he said, how come? I said, because it was real. People don't want to be sold. They can smell it coming a mile away. If you're selling them, they don't want to listen. If you're showing them something real and authentic that they can relate to, they'll share it. They'll like it. Stay real, right? Thanks, everybody. I'll post some of this stuff on um, the Spire Group. I have a WRA resource page, and then we'll pull it down next week. But if you want to grab any information off there, you can. Thank you.